Hi, I'm Henry from FSW, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about aerodynamic drag, how it's made, its types, how these types change with airspeed, and how its dynamics throughout the flight regime can affect an airplane and how we fly it. To understand why drag is formed, let's take the side view of an aerodynamic surface and look at the forces acting upon it. This surface can be a wing, a bump on the fuselage, or any other surface moving through the air. This line represents the total force exerted on the surface by the air. We can split it up into two vectors, lift and drag. The lift force acts perpendicular to the direction of the airflow, while the drag force goes in the opposite direction of the airflow. The drag force is the resistance against the forward movement of the airplane and counteracts thrust. Now that you understand the fundamentals of what drag is and how it's formed, let's take a look at the first category of drag parasitic drag and its different types. First of all, when air hits the surfaces of an aircraft, it gets slowed down by the overall shape and therefore creates resistance. This is called form drag. The more sleek and aerodynamic the shape of an aircraft is, the less form drag it will experience. Secondly, when air molecules hit a surface on an aircraft, they hit small bumps and deformities. This slows down the path of the air molecules over the surface, creating what we call skin friction drag. Thirdly, interference drag occurs when different airflow streams caused by the aircraft intersect and become turbulent. The effects of all three kinds of parasitic drag are magnified as airspeed increases. The second category of drag is called lift-induced drag, or just induced drag as many people call it. Induced drag decreases exponentially as airspeed increases, opposite of parasitic drag. It occurs as a result of lift being created from any surface. As lift increases as angle of attack increases, so does induced drag. An airplane at a 5 degree angle of attack will create a lot less drag than an airplane at 15 degrees AOA. For example, in my last video I discussed how downward lift from the horizontal stabilizer and its negative angle of attack creates induced drag that lowers the performance of the airplane. Flaps are also an example of induced drag. Probably one of the most important instances where induced drag has an effect is in adverse yaw, as it often plays a part in spinning situations. The lowered aileron creates induced drag, much like a flap does, and slows the raised wing down, creating a yawing motion that can sometimes lead to or aggravate a spin. The same effect is also true for any control surface. When you raise the elevator, it lowers the angle of attack of the horizontal stabilizer farther into the negative, increasing induced drag. Let's now go back to the drag chart we used to show drag with airspeed. We can add together both the induced drag and parasitic drag to create a line of total drag. You can see that the least total drag occurs at the point where the induced drag and parasitic drag lines intersect. This is called the maximum lift over drag speed, or LD max. It's an airplane's most efficient speed, where it will get the most distance for fuel burned, or in simpler terms, its best range. It's also the airplane's best glide speed, where it will get the farthest distance for an altitude lost with an engine out. The place where the drag lines stop is the stall speed of the airplane, but it's important to consider that drag and lift continue to work even after the airplane is stalled. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and happy flying.